Hello. If people all over the world have suddenly disappeared, if your family has disappeared, vanished in front of your eyes, or you can't find your family, watch this video all the way to the end as I try to explain this video can save your life. I'm sorry that you're watching this video and if you witness your family and millions around the world vanish from off the earth and now there's chaos I know you're terrified and I want to help you survive the Bible told us that this would happen and what will come on the earth after your family and the millions around the world have disappeared I will tell you right now that it is not aliens we did not get abducted we did not get taken out of the way because we couldn't comply what happened was everyone who believed in Jesus Christ as their Savior made him the Lord of their life had him a relationship with him had him in their heart all Christians, all infants, all babies in the womb, infants, newborns, children who had not reached the age of accountability, we have all been taken up to meet Jesus in the air in the rapture of the church. We have not died. In fact, we skipped over death. And we have gone to heaven and we're safely at home. You may want to grieve us. You may not be able to find us, but know that we are safe and you can be in heaven with us. And Jesus Christ is a key to unlock a eternity with God to be with us forever. John chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 tells us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, in the way you know. It's also explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And also in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we're going to read 4 through 7, 14 through 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And sleep with Jesus means the believers who have died previously, your grandmas, your grandpas, your moms and dads, whoever had believed in Jesus and had died previously to your family disappearing and all the millions around the world disappearing. Let's continue on. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, we went home to be with Jesus, and now that we're home, the tribulation is about to start. The tribulation is a seven year period of God's judgment on the earth.
Here is what the Bible tells us is coming in the next seven years. You see everyone here, they're, we're all gone. The seven years will get progressively worse. There'll be a mix of natural disasters and terrifying supernatural events. The main focus of this time will be the judgment of Israel. Watch carefully what happens there in Israel. Its effects will be global. Watch for two men who will boldly preach and perform miracles there in Israel. God sent these men. Eventually a world leader will ro rise up and lead a one world government. The Bible calls him the Antichrist. There will also be a global unified religion under one world religious leader. The Bible calls him a false prophet, the false prophet actually. This may seem like a good idea at first. What these two are doing this world leader that steps up the Antichrist and what he what he will do because he'll probably have the answers for the rapture when we all disappear he'll probably stand up and say he's got all the answers and it will seem like a good idea at first but in the three and a half year mark things are going to take an ugly turn that world leader is going to exalt himself and demand that you worship him and the religious leader will be a second in command and will demand that everyone take a mark of some kind on their hand or on their forehead. This will show your allegiance to the Antichrist. And though you will not be able to participate in the economy without the mark. But I want to tell you right now, I want to give you this warning. If you don't listen to anything else, listen to this. Do not take the mark. This is the most important thing I can tell you. Because if you want to be reunited with your family, you cannot take the mark. Taking the mark will literally seal you into eternity in hell. You'll be eternally separated. You will be suffer punishment and torment forever and ever. The Bible warns us of this in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he shall cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Herein is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now this may not be a literal six 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 on someone's forehead or hand. And as we see same pre raptured all kinds of different cashless society things coming. This B system will, you will have to take this mark to buy and sell. And what this really looks like, I don't know. But the Bible makes it clear what the consequences are for taking the mark. We see that in Revelation 14, 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the cup of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, 
who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Herein is pa the patience of the saints. Here are they that keepeth the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. So make no mistake about it. This decision not to take the mark will cost you your life. Revelation 20 verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. In their hands, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So see, you will die if you, for Jesus, if you refuse the mark. At the end of the seven years, Jesus will return to the earth. He will overthrow Satan and the leader of the world, the Antichrist. And he will establish his earthly kingdom on earth. And if you do not take the mark and you die for Jesus, you'll be rewarded with being part of this kingdom forever. You know, it's time to rethink your belief system. You might think you're good enough, that you are a good enough person. Romans 3.23 says, For all the sin that come short of the glory of God. Maybe in your mind you knew Jesus but you did not have a relationship with him. There is a huge difference between factual knowledge and a relationship. I invite you to really know, love, and serve Jesus Christ. You may even you may have even repeated a prayer to accept Jesus as your Savior, but didn't really know what it meant. Maybe you shut Jesus out because of a church or a Christian offended you? Well, we're all sinners. All us Christians, like everybody's a sinner. Just trying to learn and follow Jesus. So don't miss heaven because someone offended you. Jesus is holy. He is also an inviting, humble. He offers forgiveness with grace to all who ask. Good enough doesn't work. Good works don't work. Criticizing Christians doesn't work. Admit your own need for God's intervention while you still have the opportunity. According to the pro prophecies of the Bible, which predict the rapture, a huge percentage of the earth population will die during the tribulation. Your family was faithful. And you figured their good works and prayers were your ticket into heaven. But you were left behind. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe you entirely dismiss Christianity as boring, ridiculous, or irrelevant. But being left behind it was your wake-up call. Please commit to following Jesus now. Find a Bible. You need to repent and believe in Jesus. Doing so can save your life. The Bible says that we are all saved through faith. It's a gift of God. Out of the riches of his mercy and grace, don't think that you could be good enough and somehow earn your way into heaven. Well, here on the screen is ABCs of Salvation. Accept that you're a sinner and God's punishment for you is death and separation from God forever. you got to understand that no one deserves 
to be saved by what they do. But the Bible tells us the sinful nature is for every is of everyone. Ephesians two, eight and nine says as far by grace you are saved through faith, and is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see we we can't we can't earn it. Romans three ten says as is written, there is none righteous, no, not a one. Romans 3.23 says, For all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. And 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. B. As we see here, believe that Jesus paid the God's price for your sins when he died on the cross. Believe that Jesus' death and resurrection is the only thing that saves you. Place your faith in what Jesus did for the forgiveness of your sins. The price Jesus paid on the cross. His death on the cross was the good news, the gospel. Jesus paid the penalty that your death deserved. You know, you deserve death because of the penalty of sin, but Jesus paid that. We see this in Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, as I said, we all sinned. But before we even turned to Jesus, before we even admitted, before we were even born, Jesus died for us. John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And here's the thing here. You may feel like you're condemned like you, because you didn't go in the rapture. John 3.17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, he didn't, he didn't look at your wrongdoings and that's why you left. You left. He left you because you didn't believe in him. Now we got to listen to this first. Next right here. He that believeth on him is not condemned. See, everybody that believes in Jesus is not condemned. They'll be in heaven. They won't be in hell. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So right now you're in this boat. You didn't believe in the name of the Son of God, so you're left behind. But turn to Jesus before it's too late. That's why we're giving you the ABCs of salvation. In John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus makes this statement because he is the only way to the Father. Why? Because he is the one that died for you. He's the one that paid the price. He bought the ticket to get you into heaven. Basically, our sin puts us in a jail cell awaiting the death sentence. Jesus paid our bell and now the, the bailer the bailiff the jailer un unlocks the door to our cell says you're free to go someone paid your bill that was Jesus but you didn't accept it before that trumpet sounded and now your family millions around the world have vanished You can still escape that jail cell, escape dying and going to hell, but it's going to be harder because you rejected the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He paid the price for you. He's your free ticket into heaven. See, is confess. Confess and repent your sins. Call on Jesus in prayer. 
be sorry enough for your sins that you are willing to turn away from them and come to Jesus by faith the gift of eternal life is yours already all you have to do is want it then claim it you see that there on the screen confess this and call on the name of Jesus to save you from the punishment and the penalty of your sin commit to serve him as God and the Lord of your life Romans 10 9 and 10 says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved and this is the, see this is the difference right here it says and believe in your heart that's I mean if you knew in your mind who Jesus was and you've said with your mouth you made a you said a prayer and you didn't understand it but you said yeah I'm a Christian it, that's why it didn't work because it was just with your mouth and you knew who he was in your mind you had that knowledge of him but you didn't have a relationship relationship man you have him in your heart that's where you need to get Jesus in your heart because now you're going to have to possibly die for Jesus and to die for Jesus you're going to have to love him you have to love love in your heart for him because if you don't love him with your heart you're not going to die for him you're not going to try to survive fight to get to be with Jesus so believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved for it's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so believe with your heart and confess with your mouth don't intellectually know don't just say words to please somebody and right now I mean you're not pleasing the church or anything because the, the true believers are gone so you're not trying to flatter them now it's a wake-up call to you you could have went the easy way now it's the hard way but it's still possible And now we're going to go to 1 John chapter 1, from over 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is done in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So what do you need to do to go to heaven? To have eternal life, to be saved by the blood of the Lamb, and to be born again? All these expressions describe the relationship with Jesus and with God. By trusting in Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. Since He is present everywhere, you can speak aloud, write it down, You could have thoughts in your heart, just think about them in your mind. He will hear you. You could pray something like this. Here on the screen we have the sinner's prayer, which says, Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer, asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross for at Calvary that I might be forgiven and have ever eternal life in the kingdom of heaven father I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now to come into my life and to be a personal Lord and Savior I repent of my sins and I will worship you all the days of my life Because your word is the truth, I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the sinner's prayer. You don't have to read this verbatim. 
you know, just just a simple prayer, just acknowledging that you're a sinner, and you believe in that, like we, we showed you the ABCs of salvation. Admit you're a sinner, believe in your heart that Jesus was is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Call on him, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Here's another sample of prayer you can pray. Dear God, I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness because it separates me from you. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for my sins. I know I can never be good enough to earn salvation because it is a gift from you. I believe Jesus Christ lived a sinless life and he was crucified, died, and was buried. After three days you raised him from the dead again. I am sorry and I repent and turn away from my sins. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life as my Savior. I accept your free gift of salvation. I place my trust in you only. Thank you, Jesus, from this moment of my life is yours. Amen. So just something like that, just some type of prayer. It don't have to be the prayer I just said or the sinner's prayer on the screen. Just some prayer from your heart. Then what's next? You're caught up in a war for, of souls between God and Satan. And it's clear that God is going to win. But there will be many casualties. Many will die. If you can find the Bible, read it. By reading the Bible, you can know what is coming. I suggest Revelations from chapter 8 on to the rest of the book, from eight, chapter 8 to chapter 22. It describes what's coming up next in the world that you're living in now. It's written sometimes in metaphors, but it lays out in detail what is coming. So embrace hope. Jesus is coming as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So read the Bible. Connect with God and with other followers of Jesus because Jesus is coming. Read the Bible when you can. Since you refuse the mark, and you gave your life to Jesus, I will tell you now that this will be a very hard time for you. You will die for your faith. Revive your thinking and lifestyle. Revise it. You may endure the full seven years, but to do so you will need to become a spiritual and physical soldier Alert, observant, disciplined, obedient to God, strong and able to endure hardship. I suggest that you move into survival mode. Forget luxuries, identify the essentials that are needed. Food and means to cook it, water, clothing for seasonal weather, good shoes and shelter. In your thinking, go past camping to disaster. Hard times are coming. I expect that your survival will depend on your ability to function outside the system because the enemy is in power now. So get smart. Get offline. Be careful who you trust. Please know that you're being prayed for. And if you believe and have accepted Jesus, then soon you will see your family again. And you will meet Jesus in heaven. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon in heaven. So please, listen to my plea. You will. You may have. You may die. But if you want to be reunited with your family, if you want to be in peace, if you want to live eternity in peace, we're all going to live forever, one way or another. If you want to live in peace. They make this decision to come to Jesus, to trust in Jesus and his finished work. 
come join your family and when you do you will be with us forever you will be in peace if you deny it then you will spend eternity in hell where you will be tortured and tormented forever now I don't want that for you Jesus doesn't want that for you and if you're listening to this video and you've gotten this point you miss your family you want to know what's happened to them you want to be with them again so trust in Jesus if you find the Bible read it read the Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John so you can know who Jesus is read Revelation so you'll see what's ahead coming ahead for you you may have to flee to wilderness and survive but I love you God bless you I'll be praying for I'll, I'll, I'll be praying for you before the rapture happens and I'll be praying for you in heaven and I hope to see you soon and if and if you last all the way to the end then you'll see your family and Jesus and me as well coming on horses as Jesus defeats sin and death and he sets up his millennial kingdom where we'll be reigning with him for a thousand years until that time we will be in heaven protected from all the evil that has come on this world I hope that you heed this warning that this video that you allow this video to save your life and that we see you very soon I love you and God bless you and we'll see you in heaven God willing please listen to this video take what I had to say to heart trust in Jesus now make him the Lord of your life I love you God bless you I pray to see you in heaven soon